Do you want to trade on Uniswap with code, a bot, or other integrations? Watch this video and I'll show you how to calculate price impact before making a swap. That's the amount that your trade will move the current price. In a pool with low liquidity, even swapping one ETH could change the price by 90% or more and result in you getting way less tokens than you expected. So it's important to look at the price impact before executing any trade. Let's learn how to estimate price impact. I have an empty project here with NPM and a few libraries installed. I have Uniswap's V3 Core, I have V3 Periphery, the V3 SDK, and Ethers JS. That's all that we should need to be able to calculate price impact. I also have an empty file, getPriceImpact.js, where we'll be writing our code. Start by importing Ethers.js, which we'll use to interact with the blockchain. We're going to need to interact with five different contracts. I'm going to copy and paste the APIs, which we'll pull from the Uniswap libraries here. These are the ABIs for the Quoter 2, a pool, and Uniswap's factory. And this is Quoter 2, not to be confused with Quoter. We'll need two more ABIs as well, the ERC20 and the Wrapped Ether ABI. I'm also going to paste the addresses of these contracts. There's a different pool contract for every pair and fee, so I'll paste the token contracts. Um, I just did that, and we'll use those to dynamically look up the pool using our token contract addresses. Now we'll set up a provider with Ethers.js to interact with the blockchain, and this requires connecting to a node on the Ethereum network. I'm going to use Infura to do that, but I'll be using a fake API key in the URL. My fake API key is abc123, but you should get your own URL and API key from Inferro's website. Using the same fake one as me is going to fail. Now we'll use this URL in our provider. Now it's time to write our main function where most of our code is going to be going. And this takes a token in, a token out, the fee of the pool we want to interact with, and the amount you want to swap. And when I say token in and out, I actually mean the contract addresses of the token in and the token out. Keep in mind that the greater the number of tokens passed in, the more liquidity you'll use up and the more the price impact is going to be. That's why the amount in is important. The first thing we'll do is initialize a factory contract. This takes the factory address, the factory ABI, and our provider. Now we'll use that to dynamically look up the pool address we want to swap on with our two tokens and the fee. Then we'll initialize this pool. Now, using this pool contract, we're going to grab um, a piece of the state on this contract, the value of slot zero, which includes the square root price x96, representing the price ratio between the two tokens in the pool. And then we'll convert it into a human readable price ratio, like what you would see in the Uniswap app. This is all part of calculating our price impact.
I've covered what the Square Root Price X96 is in a lot of detail in some other videos, so check those out in my Uniswap playlist if you're interested. I won't get too much into them here because it would require a lot of time and kind of derail us. Now we want to get token 0 and token 1 from the pool. And I just realized I forgot to copy two files into our project, one for the ERC20 ABI and one for the wrapped Ether ABI. These simply include the ABIs for those contracts. Um, I'm going to paste these in right now and I'll give you these in um, a link to GitHub in the description of this video. So I've just added those here and here. And that will allow us to require these two files. So we're calling token0 and token1 functions here on the pool contract that we've initialized to get the token0 and token1 on the pool. Now this token0 is not necessarily the same as the token in that we're passing to this function. The order that tokens exist on a pool matters so that we calculate the correct price ratio and not accidentally calculate its inverse because the square root price x96 assumes a specific token order when storing the price ratio. Now we need to actually check if token in is the same as token zero. It might be, it might not. Now we need to get the decimals while well, the number of decimals um, for each the token in and the token out and we'll need this for the math when calculating our human readable price ratio because if the both tokens have 18 decimal places it will be a little different than if one token has 18 decimal places and the other one has six decimal places like for example USDC. Um, and to get this, we need to initialize the contracts for token 0 and token 1. And to initialize those contracts, we first need to get the APIs for those. So I'm going to write a quick function that grabs the API for a specific token address. We'll just add that right up here above our main function. And all this does is it checks if the address is equal to the wrapped ether address. If it is, we'll grab the wrapped ether ABI that we imported up here. And otherwise, we will grab the ERC20 ABI. So this is not going to work for all tokens, but um, most of the tokens that we're going to swap will be ERC20 tokens, so this will work for them. And now let's call this function and pass in both token in and token out. And then we'll use that to initialize the contracts for both uh, the token in and the token out. And then on both of these contracts, we're going to call the dot decimals function, which will return the number of decimals on each of these token contracts. What we need to do now is get the estimated square root price x96 after making a swap using the quarter 2. So we'll initialize the quarter contract here. And on the quota, we're going to call the contract quote exact input single, but first we have to build the params that we want to pass to that function. We'll do that right now.
Now we can call that function on the quoter. So here on the quoter, we've called quote exact input single and passed in our params. Let me take a second to explain these params. It takes the address of the token in, the address of the token out, the fee. So there are four different potential fee tiers on each pool, and they have different liquidity in each one, as well as potentially different swap prices. So we need to pass in the fee to get an accurate estimate. There is the amount in because, as I mentioned, the more you're passing into a swap, the more the potential price impact. And lastly, we have the square root price limit x96. And this will just prevent a trade from occurring if this threshold is not met by setting it to zero. Ignore it. Um, just I'm just ignoring this for now. I wouldn't do this in production, but we're not actually swapping here, so it doesn't matter. And very importantly, we call call static because the quoter contract can actually execute trades um, in production. And this quoter contract is very inefficient. So if you do accidentally execute a trade, it's going to cost you a lot of gas, a lot more than if you use the swap router. But by doing call static, it sends the trade to the contract, but then the trade is not actually executed. And this returns a quote, which has a value on it called square root price x96 after. Let's pull this off it. And this is supposed to be the square root price after having made a hypothetical swap. Now we need to write a function to take the square root price x96, uh, this big random looking number. Hold on, I'll show you right now what one looks like. This is the current square root price x96 on the USDC wrapped ether pool, um, one of the USDC wrapped ether pools. And although this looks like a big random number, it actually represents the ratio between the two tokens in this pool. So we are going to write a function that converts this into a simple ratio that anybody can look at and understand. I'll put this just above our main function and I'll name it square root two price. So we're going to calculate a numerator, a denominator, and then we're going to make a ratio from those two values. So to get the numerator, we take the square root x96 and we multiply it by itself. so that it's not the square root anymore. Because for example, if you take the square root of four and multiply it by the square root of four, it's no longer the square root of four. It's just the number four. So we're basically unsquaring this square root x96 value. Now step two is to take the number two and shift it 192 bits. Step three is to divide step one by step two. This is now a human readable ratio between the two tokens if the tokens have the same number of decimals and the input token is the same as token zero on the pool. We have to account for cases where that's not true. For this, we're going to calculate how many decimals we should shift that ratio. What we're doing here is we are taking the difference between the two decimal values, creating a number which is one with that many zeros. And we'll use this to shift our ratio uh, to the left or to the right. Now, if token zero on the pool is not the input token, we just have to invert the ratio. We return the ratio and we are done. Now let's pass the square root price at this time now to this function.
and then we'll do the same thing except passing in the square root price x96 after, which should be the ratio after a hypothetical swap, which is what we're using the quarter to get. We don't need that let there. We now have a human readable price ratio right now and what the price ratio should be after a hypothetical swap. So we just need to use this to calculate the percent difference between them. Now we don't need to consult.log these values, but it's nice to know what the price is before and after so we can see it. Let's do this. Although we're not done, I'm going to add a call to our main function right now so that I don't forget to do it. And one more little typo here. When we are calling slot zero on the pool contract, it is a function. So make sure that you have your parentheses at the end. Now we'll calculate the absolute difference between the price and the price after. And we'll divide it by the current price. And then we'll format our output. Now let's give this a run in our console. According to this on mainnet, if we swap 100 Ether for USDC, there will be a price impact of 0.119%. Now this should be a good estimate of the price impact on a single swap, but there's a few caveats that are really important, so listen to this. The liquidity added or removed and other swaps made during the same block will influence price, so it's impossible to be 100% accurate on the price impact. And also, the code we just wrote assumes no multi-hop or multi-path swaps, which the Uniswap UI accounts for in its price impact calculations there. It's possible to build a more accurate price impact estimate than what we've done today, but it's extremely complicated. The nice thing about this is that this calculation is fast, simple, and should give you a hopefully worst case price impact. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and let me know what other tutorials you'd like to see. I will see you next time.